Today, I'm going to talk about something that I believe many of you might have gone through but still fighting against it. That is, inferiority complex. My inferiority complex, however, is a bit different. And one may find it rather odd as to why I would even call it an inferiority considering that many people my age have greater inferiorities such as not being the popular kid, getting straight A's, or simply not being good enough. But for me, it's different. I've always felt inferior to my male counterparts, even till now, at this moment, albeit to a lesser extent. But that does not make my inferiority any less worth sharing. Gender inequality is a core issue to almost every society in today's world. And many people remain and many people choose to remain silent about it, especially women. But silence can never bring justice to the numerous injustices encountered by women in the daily proceedings. Silence should never be associated with patience, rather it should be considered oppression. Silence is never gateway, is, should never be a gateway to gender equality. I would like to provide you guys an insight into my background. So my family hails from a small village in KPK called Charsidda, where deeply rooted traditional beliefs exist. I still remember one of the stories which my grandfather had so often, so often narrated to me about one of his high school teachers known as Mrs. Smith. So every teacher has his favorite student in the class and my grandfather was Mrs. Smith's favorite so much that she wished to see his village. My grandfather, unfortunately, did not allow her to see his village because women were rarely seen outside homes in the early 1950s. Fast forward some 70 years and women and families in Charsadda are sending the girls to schools. Women are seen working in farms and most of all, a woman can be seen outside without wearing a chadar, which is a long veil used to cover a woman's body. Growing up, I noticed that there was a stark difference between the upbringing of me and my brother. I was always told to be more patient, and my brother was told to hide his emotions. I remember the oft-repeated saying uh, being told to him from an early age, which is, boys don't cry, but if boys opt not to cry, isn't emotional suppression lead to aggression? If girls are taught to endure pain, to be more patient, doesn't she become more yielding in nature? This, these contrasting virtues inevitably disadvantage women as they become more passive, but men more active in nature. The notion of honor, which is so prevalent in today's society, I'm going to discuss that, uh, discuss that today. Um, so, by honor, I don't mean the reputation of the girl only. It's reputation of the male members of the family too. I never meant what it meant to be an honorable girl until one day my friend confided in me that his uncle shot his daughter when he found that she was in a relationship. I remember the 13-year-old me asking him, but why? And he blatantly replied, it was against the honor of the girl's father. Today, how many women in the name of honor are killed by their male members in, patri in patriarchal societies? So for my extended essay, I applied a feminist theory to a literary work, and I chose the work of Mary Wollstonecraft, who was a renowned feminist in 18th century. Um, in her treatise uh, called The Vindication of the Rights of Women, she, um, she uh, elevates the position of women in a Borgo society by highlighting the prejudiced notions about females. Um, her main objective was that women should be viewed as human first and foremost rather than as a separate and irreconcilably different species to men. She stated, she stated how women are told from their infancy and taught by their mothers that a little knowledge of human weakness, softness of temperament, outward obedience, and scrupulous attention to plural kind of propriety will obtain for them the protection of man. And if they're also beautiful, that's 
all they need for at least 20 years. Are we not teaching girls to be soft in nature, to act graceful, and most of all, to maintain their outward appearance so that they will so that they will get a good marriage proposal? Is that not the basement to a woman's values? She is judged solely on looks and her soft temperament rather than on intellect and other virtues. Um, so Simone de Beauvoir, who is also one of my favorite feminists, uh, stated that one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. It is society and its cultural norms that breed patriarchy and assign these stereotypical, stereotypical characteristics of what it means to be male or female. What we need to do is to challenge these stereotypes, raise our voices to break the silence, and treat an individual as an individual rather than as a he or she. That's it.